Hey everybody, welcome back to another section here in Chapter P. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at factoring polynomials in particular. Okay, just kind of continuing our work there with polynomials. Um, and you'll notice the first couple uh, items here, GCF, greatest common factors, and difference of squares, well, we've, we've kind of talked about and dealt with a little bit recently. So let's go ahead and dive on in there, okay? Example one, factor 6x cubed minus 4x. Um, and of course, we're talking about the GCF here, okay? So what do these have in common? Well, let's start off by looking at their coefficients, all right? And the coefficients of each term happen to be even, so that means I could factor a 2 out. And that's really it, because of course 6 is 2 times 3, whereas 4 was 2 times 2. So in addition to that, I could factor one of these x terms out. So that is my GCF. And we're not just saying find GCF. If, you know, if that were the case, I would be done. We're actually saying factor it out of each term. So 6x cubed divided by 2x would leave us with 3x squared. Just like negative 4x divided by 2x is going to leave us with a negative 2, okay? So there we have it factored, okay? We factored out our GCF, and we know that if we were to distribute that, we would get the original quantity back, okay? Next up, let's take a look at, at a difference of squares. And this is one of those you're going to have to start to recognize, okay? Let's go ahead and write that in. You're, you're going to be able to start, it, start recognizing these based on the individual terms, and hopefully you're seeing that 9x squared and 4 individually are in fact squares, right? Um, what times itself will give us 9x squared? That would just be a 3x, right? And what times itself would give us 4? Well, that's just going to be a 2, okay? And again, anytime you've got this difference of two squares, then you can automatically factor these out, and it's going to look an awful lot like, you know, something with its conjugate, you know, two terms with, with its conjugate, or, well, like we talked about last cycle, um, really any difference of squares, all right? <laughs> um, that a plus b, a minus b, um, that sort of setup. So, I could factor this out as a 3x plus 2 and a 3x minus 2. And in case you're having trouble believing that that would get us this back, 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times negative 2 is a negative 6x. Then I'll go on to my 2. 2 times 3x is a positive 6x. We know those cancel out. Um, and finally, 2 and uh, negative 2 will give us a product of negative 4. So there you have it, 9x squared minus 4. That is our factoring. Okay, not too bad. So next up comes a difference and a sum of cubes, okay? So that might look like this, a cubed plus b cubed, or a cubed minus, I'm reversing those on it. <laughs> All right, a cubed minus b cubed, or a cubed plus b cubed, okay? And these have a very particular uh, method of factoring them out. Now, what you gotta realize is that each one of these terms, in each one of those, is in fact cubic, right? We're talking about degree three, and so when I factor this out, um, it's not like we're always going to be able to make this nice x to the first power, okay? In fact, these have a very nice way to factor them, but only if we factor one of the two factors as x to the first, or in this case, a to the first, and the other one as a to the second, okay? Um, it really doesn't factor nicer beyond that, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at each one of them individually, okay? a cubed minus b cubed can always factor out as a minus b times the quantity a squared, okay, a squared plus an ab plus a b squared, okay? Now let's see if this actually works out for us, okay? a times a squared gives us a cubed, okay? a times ab gives us a positive a squared b. And finally, a times b squared gives me that positive ab squared. Okay, next I'll go to my negative b. Negative b times a squared gives me a negative a squared b. Excellent, those reduced out. Negative b times ab is going to give me a negative ab squared. Once again, they cancel out. And finally, negative b times b squared end up with a negative b cubed. Okay, now as long as you can remember that we're going to be looking at a binomial, a linear binomial, and a quadratic, of course, these are degree two, quadratic trinomial, okay? In fact, let's write that down. Linear binomial. We looked at our polynomial classifications last cycle, so we should know what these are. And a quadratic trinomial. Then all that we really have to remember are the signs, okay? <clears throat> Now let's take a look at the sum of cubes before we actually talk about how to remember the signs, okay? This will always factor out as the quantity a plus b times the quantity a squared minus ab plus b squared, okay? 
once again, let's just double check this and see how see if this actually works as nice as we would like it to. A times A squared gives me an A cubed. A times negative AB is a negative A squared B. A times B squared is a positive AB squared. Next up, B times A squared is a positive A squared B. B times negative AB is a negative AB squared. And B times B squared is a positive B cubed. So once again, middle terms are just reducing right out. And I'm left with A cubed plus B cubed. Okay, So there you have it. A cubed plus B cubed. A cubed minus B cubed. Works out really closely, doesn't it? And once again, that's that linear binomial, okay? A to the first, B to the first, and a quadratic trinomial. A to the second, A, B, B to the second, okay? So the only other thing you've got to remember, you'll notice that these kind of reverse and these kind of reverse. That's it, the signs. So in a case like this, all you got to remember is soap. I know, sounds ridiculous, but it can really help you. S-O-A-P. It stands for same, opposite, and this is always positive. Okay? Same, opposite, always positive. What do you notice? The first sign is the same as the original cubic sign. Okay? So that was a negative. That's a difference of cubes. It's going to be the same. Okay? The next sign is going to be the opposite of that original. So opposite of negative is going to be a positive here. Opposite of a positive, which we already matched, is going to be a negative here. And finally, the last two really stand for the last sign there, always positive. Doesn't matter. You're always going to have a positive B squared. So, okay, easy way to kind of remember what you need. All right. So let's take a look at factoring 8x cubed minus 27. The most important thing you can do here is recognize that these are cubes. They are nice, nice cubes. What times itself three times gives us 8x cubed? Well, that's going to be a 2x, right? So this you can think about as our a, okay? Next up, what times itself three times gives us 27? Well, that we can think about as our b, and that would be a 3, wouldn't it? Okay? So we know our a, we know our b, and hopefully we can use those and these to create the actual factor. So this is a difference of two cubes, clearly. So let's kind of keep that in mind as we write this out, okay? So once again, it's going to have the same sign to start off with. This was a difference. We'll put a subtraction sign there. Next up, it's the opposite sign, okay, between the first and second term in the trinomial. And finally, it's always positive here at the end. So we kind of already know our signs. And let's go ahead, go ahead and break these down now, okay? Keep in mind, it's a linear binomial. That means I'm going to take my 2x and my 3 as they are, okay? I'm just going to take that first piece there. And of course, guys, I, I want to be clear. That linear binomial, quadratic trinomial, we're assuming that this is actually raised to the third power, not a multiple of 3, okay? Some students may get that confused if later on we look at a cube that's only a cube because it's, you know, to the power of 9 or something, okay? Yes, things get a little more complicated then. I'm just talking about the base case, all right? 2x minus 3, so next up would come a squared, which is 2x times 2x, or 4x squared. Next, I'm going to get a negative ab. Well, I've, keep in mind, that's not actually a negative, right? It's just the opposite, okay? Um, a times b, 2x times 3 is a 6x. And finally, here at the end, I'm going to go ahead and square that b term. 3 squared gives me 9. There you have it, okay? So, it's not going to factor too nice beyond that. Okay, later on we'll, we'll talk about how you can start breaking these things up regardless. But as it stands right now, this is a pretty good method of factoring this out. Okay? Now, <clears throat> from there we're going to take a look at some trinomials. Now, hopefully this kind of rings a bell uh, when you think about Algebra 1 and the work that you had done there. Okay, I've got x squared minus 7x minus 30. And the, the main way that you're going to be breaking these down is really as, you know, it's a quadratic, degree 2. We're going to look at 2 degree 1 binomials, okay? Well, x times x is going to give me that x squared out front. And for this numerical term out back here, I just have to ask myself what two numbers multiply to negative 30, okay? Unfortunately, there are a lot of options, aren't there? Negative 30 could be, could be 1 and negative 30, could be negative 1 and 30. It could be 2 and negative 15, negative 2 and positive 15. It could be 3 and negative 10, negative 3, and 
positive 10. It could be, what, 5 and negative 6 or negative 5 and positive 6. So you have too many options, don't you? Well, until you realize that this is two terms by two terms, and I'm going to have x times a number and x times a number, that'll create this negative 7x. So it's not just what two terms multiply to negative 30, it's which ones multiply to negative 30, and this is the important part, sum to what? Well, negative 7. Which of these would sum to negative 7? Well, right there, 3 and negative 10 would add up to negative 7. So let's try this. Positive 3, negative 10. And just to check this real fast, let's quickly do this. x squared minus 10x plus 3x. Well, there's my negative 7x total. And finally, negative 30. So we have now factored the quadratic trinomial with leading coefficient is equal to 1. And those are what we call, what I'll occasionally refer to as like our easy trinomials. Okay, you're, you're going to see why. All right? Those are the ones that really are not so bad. Okay, so we're going to come back in the next video and we'll take a look at a more difficult trinomial here, okay?